What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released iOS 17.4 Beta 4 to register developers just one week after the release of Beta 3. Now along with this update, we got the fourth beta for iPadOS 17.4, WatchOS 10.4, macOS Sonoma 14.4, tvOS 17.4 and then we did also get the third beta for vision OS 1.1 for the Apple Vision Pro but of course we're going to be talking about iOS 17.4 beta 4 in this video so you can see the size of this update came in at 571 megabytes on my 15 Pro Max which is a smaller size than beta 3 however we do have more changes in this update which we'll talk about here in a moment so if you check out the build number for this new update it is two one E five two zero nine B. So we do have a B at the end of the build number, which indicates we are approaching a final release. And if we head down, you can see that the modem firmware has remained the same going from beta three to beta four. It's still at 1.55.04 on the 15 series. All right. So now what's new here in iOS 17.4 beta four. And the first thing is something pretty major. And that is inside of the settings and into battery. You will notice right away that there is a change here when it comes to battery health and charging optimization and that is that now it does not show the battery health percentage it just says normal so before you would get a percentage right once you went into the battery section and you would kind of always see that and a lot of people would get anxiety over that percentage you know going down over time but now it just says normal however if you go into there you can see further details such as the percentage that used to be on the front end and now shows the maximum capacity percentage along with the cycle count and also the first use and manufacture date right below that. So if you were wondering why the cycle count was no longer in the settings general about section, it's because it has been moved to this section. Now keep in mind, this change is only available for the iPhone 15 series. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with the cycle count, you know, because that's only available on the 15 series as well. So unfortunately this change, this whole change right here with the battery health section is only for the 15 series, at least as of now. Now there is something else interesting here because you will notice that under battery health it says this iPhone battery is performing as expected so that is new and also below that it shows about battery and warranty so now when you tap on that you get this new kind of splash screen here that shows you a quick you know synopsis of what Apple says on their support documents however there is a change here and it's in the first sentence down here so it says the original battery was designed to retain 80 percent capacity at 1000 cycles under ideal conditions so before on Apple support documents it only said 500 cycles so I'm not sure if there's been a change that kind of just went under the radar for a while, but now Apple says that you should have a 80% capacity after 1000 cycles. And I just think that this section will also help people understand, you know, the cycles and if your battery is normal. And it's, it's just great to see that now you can see at a glance that your battery health is normal without having to go into that section and seeing that percentage right away. You have to take an extra step to see that percentage now. And also inside of the charging optimization section, you'll notice that clean energy charging is now down there. Whereas before that was its own separate section, not inside of charging optimization. And this beta also finds finally adds something that's been hinted at ever since the first beta of iOS 17.4 and that is CarPlay 2.0. So you could see from the release notes Apple says that in iOS 17.4 with supported CarPlay vehicles Apple Maps will present a new instrument cluster experience with information about upcoming maneuvers. Users will be able to swap the desired display type between the main and instrument cluster screen by tapping the map configuration button on the upper right of the map's main screen. So of course, I do not have a vehicle that currently supports CarPlay 2.0. So this is only limited at the time to 2024 and up Porsches and Aston Martins. However, this will be available on a lot more regular vehicles that you and I can afford, you know, in the coming months in 2024. A lot of manufacturers have already kind of pledged that they will support 
CarPlay 2.0 with their 2024 and newer vehicles. Also a bug that was in 17.4 beta 3 had to do with the wallpaper. So if you go to add a new wallpaper and then you go down to the collections for the 15 Pro series, it was much darker than before. And you can see that has been fixed here in beta 4. So we assumed that that was a bug, but now we have confirmation that it was a bug because it has been fixed here in beta 4. You can see the styles are back to normal, whereas before on beta 3 over here on the left, they were the always on display style where it was just much darker than it should have been. And then something else I noticed is if you go into your settings and into privacy and security, the sensitive content warning icon is missing for me. So it was missing at the beginning, but now it is there after a force quit out of settings. So just a bug that you might run into here with this beta. Now also in iOS 17.4, we have podcast transcriptions, but for some reason in beta four, they are simply not loading for most of the podcasts that I have, whereas they loaded perfectly fine beforehand. So if I go into even a short podcast like this, a 12 minute podcast, you can see that the transcriptions are not coming up. So I'm not sure what's going on with that and maybe fix any future release or even just after some time here on beta 4 but i did just want to point it out because it is something that i noticed is not working as intended after installing this update you can see pretty much none of the podcasts that normally have transcriptions have them now and then if we take a look at the release notes here so in beta 3 we had eight resolved issues so from going from beta 2 to beta 3 there were eight resolved issues and now going from beta 3 to beta 4 there is only one resolved issue however most of the you know remaining issues have already been resolved but the new one here is a fix for map kit swift ui apps might show incorrect map mode for walking and cycling routes also for some reason the stopwatch live activity is missing so i have a stopwatch running right here and it fails to show a live activity up in the top or on the lock screen so that was a feature in beta 1 and beta 2 but it started being a missing feature in beta 3 and it is still missing here in beta 4 so hopefully we see that in time for the final release now as far as performance goes performance feels fine for me so far I've not really had any type of issues with performance I haven't had any applications crash or any type of stuttering or anything like that so I would assume that performance is going to be very similar to what it was was in beta 3 I would not expect a major change here now I am going to run a Geekbench test just to see how it compares to the scores in beta 3 but again this is not fully indicative of the actual performance I will give you more of an update on performance after using it for multiple days in my Apple weekly episode on Saturday anyways we scored a 2949 on the single core and a 7313 on the multi core and you can see how that compares to the previous beta release so very similar scores really since really beta one so not a huge difference in terms of geekbench scores here on beta four now when it comes to the battery life i would expect pretty much the same thing i just said about performance with battery life so you guys can tell me what i started this video with and what i'm at now so i'm at 49 percent now a lot of times that's you know one way of initially testing the battery life and so far it actually seems a little bit better than beta 3 for me just based off of the percentage just from shooting this video so i would not be surprised to see maybe a slightly better battery life here with beta 4 but of course it's really too early to tell and i will update you guys in the apple weekly episode and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from apple so next up is going to be most likely ios 17.4 rc so since we have a b at the end of the build number and we are approaching what i assume to be the final release for ios 17.4 i would not expect any further betas after this one so i would expect the rc or release candidate build to be next so that's technically a beta but it is going to be the final version just for beta testers so i would expect to see that next week on the week of february 26th most likely on that tuesday February 27th and then after that I would expect to see the final release of iOS 17.4 on the first full week of March right there most likely on March 4th itself if not we could see it sometime on the week of March 4th and again as I've said before this is going to be a major release for those in the EU it's going to be a nice update for those in the US and other regions but in the EU it's going to be a major major change in the way that you use your iPhone because of the whole sideloading deal 
deal. So that's going to be interesting to see kind of how the media handles that as well. But anyways, that's iOS 17.4 beta 4. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found anything else new, let me know in the comment section below or also in the Discord server. We always talk about the changes over in the Apple Den Discord server. I'll leave that link down below if you have not joined that already. And if you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.